hit with a massive lesson on border security. As we've all seen, pitiful Liberal Representative Nancy Pelosi had very bad period these few months as she embarrassed herself, her colleagues and her fellow Liberals. Lately, she made an even bigger fool of herself when she appeared and gave a dumb speech on CNN. However, even someone like Nancy can see that illegal immigration is the key part of destabilizing this country, so she knows exactly where to push. Such a liberal. Anyway, the people have spoken. One proud American from Texas decided to tell her how things are. From Zoot Feed, this Texas cowboy owns a 1,000 acre ranch on the Mexican border. He decided to give Nancy Pelosi a piece of his mind on border security. During a town hall meeting, Dr. Mike Vickers, a veterinarian, told Pelosi he found his dogs playing with a human skull, belonging to a woman, whose other remains he found a few yards away. After describing other horrors, he asks Pelosi, Will you and your Democrat Party support President Trump in building a wall or a fence, shutting down sanctuary cities, and giving more power to the border patrol? Her answer proves she has learned nothing. Watch the video here. Nancy Pelosi is a kind of politician designed to make chaos, we can't see anything good from her. Share a few Donald Trump refuses to hold his wife's hand. The reason is unbelievable. We all saw how Donald Trump refused to hold his wife's hand as they got off Air Force One in Palm Beach. This left space for everybody to interpret it the way they like it. According to Daily Mail, Trump was holding his wife's hand until he started to clap for his supporters. Melania tried to take his hand after that but Trump let it go again. Body language expert Patty would explain this by saying that Trump wants to leave an alpha impression on the crowd like he is the president on his own. This was a very powerful message according to him. Wood has written a book about body language and first impressions so his opinion on this matter, really matters. He said, holding hands can communicate so much about an individual and a couple, depending on the position of the hand, who reaches it first, who breaks it first. What's fascinating, I think to all of us, is that they are holding hands at all. They hold hands in private, so we know that there's a couple that they weren't seeing in public or at the inauguration. He also talked about Melania. Even though we've been hearing that Melania wants to be like Jackie O., she initiated this hand hold. He clapped his hands to get out of it, which was very odd because basically, he's clapping away from her. And then the second time she goes into a supplicant handhold in which she cups her hand up, showing, I'm supplicant, I will take the bottom position but I want to hold hands. Tell us your opinion in the comment section below. Thank you, everyone. Soros exposed for funding riots. The controversial billionaire George Soros is known to fund all kind of activities for the left-wing parties all over the world. The most recent one was the violent riot against Milo Yiannopoulos in Barclay. Soros has enemies all over the world. He got kicked from Russia and several other countries for funding all kinds of rebellions by the left-wingers. He wants a world without borders, with no nations. That's his New World Order vision. Source corrupts media all the time. By doing that he wants to create the illusion that Trump, or any other politician he opposes, is not wanted by the people. It's basically the same story all across the world. Nevertheless, all recent polls show that Trump's support from the people is rising, even more after the elections. This is a huge blow for Soros as the right-wingers taking over the governments in their countries and kicking Soros foundations out of them. According to the right-wing website Breitbart the Alliance for Global Justice is funded by Soros, and it finances the refuse fascism movement who openly tells that it is shutting all right-wing movements in the world. While it is unclear whether those who carried out the violence were paid to do so, the benefactors of the Alliance for Global Justice, and refuse fascism, are listed online. According to the Daily Caller, spread the word, so the world shall know of the evil called George Soros. Doctor tells the truth about Trump's executive order. Liberals are outrageous.
We heard all kinds of insults from the liberals these days about Trump's executive order, calling him xenophobic, Islamophobic etc. But not all Muslims agree with the liberals, and that's what is driving them crazy. Dr. Quanta Almet, a physician, told Fox and Friends that so many Muslims actually support Trump's new executive order. She said, I think a lot of Muslims around the world are afraid. But many of us, especially opposed to radical Islam, re-welcoming it. We don't want to prohibit refugees forever. We, as Americans, want to help those in need, but we do think we have to make assessments based on the regions that are identified. Libya, the third front of ISIS. Somalia, beyond failed. Its own government cannot travel outside its capital, let alone govern it. Iraq, we're fighting ISIS, but a special exception must be made for Iraqis helping U.S. forces. So, we see it as very pragmatic. Muslim minorities that are persecuted badly in Pakistan and other places were thrilled that this draft wording includes penalizing those that commit honor violence or persecution of minorities. A lot of Muslims are subject to that. So, I think there is a positive feeling. She also embraced Trump's proposal to build safe zones in Syria and condemned Obama for not doing something like that. Watch the video about CNN culture with massive proposal for Trump. Rioters are scared to death. Ann Coulter supports Trump threat of stopping the funding of all schools who spread violence and repression. This Friday in an interview broadcast on Breitbart News Daily, Ann Coulter talked about the rioting of the liberals to shut down everyone they dislike. This time Milo Yiannopoulos was the center of attention. Alex Marle the host of Sirius XM opposed the exaggerated liberal media use of the term fascist for everyone who is on the left. It is the rise of a genuinely violent fascist movement, Coulter said of these left-wing gangs. It would be as if the Nazis went around complaining about how the Jews were attacking them and oppressing them. That's basically what we have going on now. She recalled how violent protesters shut down a Trump rally in Chicago during the 2016 presidential campaign. It was amazing to me how many families with kids, and wives, and daughters, they continued to go out to see Trump. It is like my college speeches, something I've been doing for a long time. You know, you'll have 20 speeches that are fine, and then suddenly, bam! The violent mobs show up. You never know when it's going to happen, so you have to be prepared all the time, she said. But Americans still did come out. I think that was intended to reduce Trump's crowds, and make it look like he was the one creating the violence. All of this, just for someone who says, we have to take care of Americans first. That's what they're so upset about, Alex, Coulter declared returning to an earlier point about how the U.S. Congress is attempting to cut back on the cost of major programs for Americans, such as Social Security and Medicare, at the same time open borders advocates insist on importing even more dependents. We can't afford that. We can't afford this. We have to raise the retirement age. No, stop. We gave at the office. Ann Coulter supported the threat Trump made to windrill the federal funding from Barclay if the college administration does not deal with the violence. This is a genuine threat to democracy when people can't engage in the first of the Bill of Rights, the very first one that's mentioned, freedom of speech, she warned. This has been a burgeoning movement, particularly on our college campuses, for a long time. In a calm, reflective moment, I think he should do the same thing with any colleges that have speech codes or need special free speech zones where students and or professors are disciplined for engaging in First Amendment speech, she advised. This has absolutely been done before, she noted. The IRS has been used to say, sorry. If you're collecting student aid, you can't attend these colleges. We're not sending any student aid to these colleges who don't abide by. Dash and those were often kind of silly principles being enforced, like Bob Jones University, that's sort of a very hardcore fundamentalist Christian college. I'm a Christian. It has some beliefs, or it used to, I don't know if they still do, but one was from the Tower of Babel. They wouldn't allow interracial dating. They had blacks, they had whites, and it was mostly a black and white country back then, in fact, 
scholarships for black students, but whites couldn't date black students. Blacks couldn't date white students, she explained. And I ought to add, because I looked this up at the time, there was very little dating of any sort. If you went on a date at Bob Jones, you had to have a chaperone with you. Anyway, there was no racial animus to this, it hit both races equally. But for that, the IRS came down like a ton of bricks on Bob Jones University. No federal aid through student scholarships, as I recall. A student who had student aid could not attend that college. And now, we have a genuine fascist, violent fascist, movement rising up, and there's not only no punishment, but taxpayers are paying for this. Oh, no, no, no. Second to immigration, the next biggest problem in this country is the universities and public schools, she said. She also said that the university administration is the source of this hatred and violent repression. These are not spontaneous movements. I described in my book Demonic on Group Think and Mob Behavior, that these are particularly lick spittle students that want to please the professor. And they know damned well their professors are opposed to everything Ann Coulter says and everything Milo says. It's just like presenting a polished apple to the teacher. Oh, teacher, here, I brought you a gift today. I went and protested Ann Coulter. At the risk of being snobbish, but telling you what the truth is, it doesn't tend to happen at the Ivy League schools, she observed. Barclay is weird. The worst ones are the Jesuit colleges and the community colleges. I mean, at Harvard and Yale, and I've spoken at both places many times, Wellesley, Smith, my own alma mater Cornell, the kids are too, they want to challenge you intellectually. They'd be embarrassed to throw something. Though I do think there is a new movement kind of sweeping through here, she added, at some of these schools, we'd be organized. We'd be ready to go. I'd give the speech. They could stand up at the mix. I'd take questions until they had collapsed from exhaustion. And usually at the tougher schools to get into, that's how they want to be. They want to ask you a question and outsmart you. It's when it is a three-year-old, who doesn't have the power of speech or logic, and just throws food, so it would tend to be the lesser colleges. The other thing is, when we would be prepared and of college Republicans and large men prepared to throw out any hecklers, sometimes the members of the administration would stop people, our people, who had rented the room had paid for me to come speak. Someone comes to disrupt and start heckling, they try to remove the heckler, and an administrator, this happened at Syracuse University, some dean of students stepped forward and said, you can't remove the heckler because you're interfering with his free speech rights. What do you think of this? Share your thoughts. Liberal Robert De Niro threatens to punch Trump in the face. Patriotic Americans with instant reaction. We all know that the majority of Hollywood celebrities are liberals, and they don't like Donald Trump at all. This week on the talk show The View, liberal actor Robert De Niro was discussing about his new film, The Comedian, but the conversation turned to political, and he started talking about his statement about punching Donald Trump in the face before the election, according to The Daily Beast. He did not apologize because of that. Instead he continued talking with the same tone. I said that because he said that about somebody, that he would like to punch them in the face. How dare he say that to the crowd? How dare he say the things he does? Of course I want to punch him in the face. De Niro tried to justify his words by claiming that Trump was a bully who deserves that. He said, it was only a symbolic thing, anyway. It wasn't like I was going to find him and punch him in the face. Boo he's got to hear it. He's got to hear that, you know, that's how he makes people feel. It's not good to feel that way. It's not good to start that stuff up, but at the same time, sometimes when people are bullies like that, that's what you have to do to shut them up. Bully them back. The patriotic Americans were not happy to hear this, and slammed a Nero on social media.